Here we are at an actual IMAX movie studio. Particular one is the Savoy 16. I'm here with the manager, Melissa Garski, and the head projectionist for IMAX, Steve Essex. And we're gonna learn about the movies. So, um, how, uh, how basically does it work? Do we still have big giant reels of film and, and that stuff? Or, or? Uh, not anymore. I want to say with IMAX in particular, they made the switch to digital about five years ago now. About five years ago. There are still some theaters that do uh, run film for okay. IMAX. Uh, that's the kind of their specialty thing, but there's very few. And that's, it's international, I think maybe three or five internationally. So. And it right. tends to be the, uh, the educational more stuff the, more like, right? right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess that makes it a lot easier because I could imagine having these long movies with the really wide it was 70 millimeters, right? Mm -hmm. Wide films, those are some gigantic casks of film you have to carry yeah. around. I believe they used forklifts. I never worked with an IMAX film, but they I had to did. use forklifts, uh, right? Yeah, we had to use forklifts to move it. <laughs> and the actual splicing everything together, so it was one big reel. And yeah. Between 60 and 100 little reels, that took about 10 hours to do. Wow. So we have to do that overnight before the movie's opened. And, and, test it. and every, every movie theater would have to get this delivered. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right, so now, um, how many gigabytes is, uh, it's gotta be a big file. You get a hard drive, I'm not, I don't know exactly. I, I know, I can't remember what the IMAX are, but the standard films are a couple hundred gigs okay. per, per file on that, okay. and I wanna say it's probably a little bit higher for the IMAX because yeah. uh, the people at IMAX actually go through and retouch everything to make it work as well as possible with their systems. Yeah. Okay, but now, these days, you can get a, some portable hard drive that has two terabytes or something. Yeah, they right? just so. they just send us a standard external hard drive. Wow. We plug it into the server, and it it, it works. It's about real time is the time that it takes to ingest it into our servers. Yeah. But okay. So now the the um, often in this class we've talked a lot about economics of various things. This is really just a, a fun how things work and an opportunity to go behind the scenes. Sure. which is exciting. But the economics of movie theaters. Basically, the ticket price goes to the people who made the movie, right? Uh, yeah, most of it does. Um, okay. We do negotiate percentages, so mm -hmm. typically when a movie opens, I don't know exactly, I don't handle all of that, but I would guess about maybe 2% of the tickets. 2%? Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, and some of that even lower. With big movies like Avengers, I, I doubt that we see much of that for a very long time. The longer we have the movies, um, the higher the percentage that we get is, but it doesn't yeah. ever make much of a difference. It doesn't no. cover a lot of our costs. It's the popcorn. It is the popcorn. And the sodas. And the soda. And how can and you have nachos. a movie without popcorn and sodas <laughs> and right. nachos? All mm -hmm. right. Yep, that's All what right. keeps us going. So. Very good. Yeah. Very good. All right. Uh, oh, the last thing is these 3D movies. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember as a little kid, it was the crappy one lens was red and one was green and it didn't make any sense. But I've seen the 3D movies. Now it is so amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. So the, the glasses you wear are polarizers, right? Correct. Okay. Um, so what happens is coming off of the projectors, um, with the IMAX there's actually two projectors. You get one for your left eye and one for your right eye. Uh, and it's incredibly accurate. Uh, if someone were to cover that lens, it would look like someone came up and covered your left eye. Mm -hmm. huh. um, but each one has its own independent polarization and they're polarized at different uh, angles. And then those glasses correspond to that so that you get the true left eye, right eye effect. Wow. Wow, so in that case they send you, hey, this is the left uh, and this is the right uh, hair drive, right? Well, luckily it all. With film. with film it yeah. was that way, but okay. with uh, digital it just, just figures it out. Figures yeah. it out. They, yeah. they're, they're smart enough to not make us think about it. Right. <laughs> oh, that's good, that's good. I hate to say, hey, it's upside down. Your left, yeah. your left. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, I do remember, because I'm older than you guys, uh, going to movie theaters and um, you know, sometimes you know, the film would break or the, you'd have to splice it or you'd have to wait till they change reels and the big movies always had intermissions. Mm -hmm. Of course, the real reason was so they could put a different film canister exactly, on. Exactly, yeah. 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 Or play it in multiple theaters. I know most mm -hmm. of them only had one screen. Yeah. But we did that when we still had film. We would only pay yeah. for one movie. Ah, so and then run it down the films. hall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we'd start it again in another theater. Uh -huh. Give 15 minutes for people to go purchase concessions. Exactly. And then come right back <laughs> and enjoy the rest of their movie. So well, that's great. That was behind that. So. Well, here, take us inside. All right. Okay. So look at the size of these, these projectors. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is some big stuff. So, what's the, uh, the the light bulbs in these things? So, what they are is they're a xenon gas light bulb, and the ones in the IMAX projectors are actually running at 6,000 watts. Uh, they're pretty big bulbs. Uh, it's pressurized xenon gas, and what they do is they have an anode and a cathode, and that excites the gas. And the reason they use xenon is because 
it's the most accurate representation of sunlight that we can get, and that's the best for projection sure. that they use. So, so I mean, it's a plasma, right? And a, a plasma will excite the electrons and the atoms. Xenon is the largest noble gas, so it has the most number of electrons. So if you add up all the different transitions, you'll cover everything in the color spectrum. So uh, another wonderful use for plasmas, xenon light bulbs for IMAX projectors. Okay, so we have these two things, and there's two projectors because of the left, right eye stuff for the, for the 3D. 3D. If it's just not 3D, do you just use one projector? Uh, I believe that we both still, still power yeah. on, uh, and they still both run. You just don't have any difference in the images and no polarization. So they're, they're exactly synced, so they're showing the same image. Yeah, so every morning when we power it up, it goes through a calibration process where it runs test patterns and realigns itself to make sure that everything is uh, going to sync up just fine when movie time comes. It looks like uh, this is where you stand and control everything? Yep. This is the, the heart of the operation? This actually, uh, they're really good about automation. This will do everything from powering up all the sound amps to... Uh, Pretty much anything that we need to do yeah. on a regular basis, it'll do for us. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have to push a button here or there, but it's it takes care of all the hardware. Yeah, and this is what has eliminated projectionists. Like, it's yes. all ran All here, by a computer. So, yeah. And you've got the sound the mixers, because it's not just the pictures, right? You've got the sound, the beautiful thundering. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, sound these are some big, big speakers. Yeah. That's actually all this behind uh -huh. you. This is just our... Uh, for our PA. I remember when you have like a 40 watt speaker or something in your house, it sounds really loud. What, how many watts of speakers do you oh, have? I wish there? I could remember, but I know that the ones that run our smaller auditoriums are over a thousand a piece. So okay. I would imagine these are probably closer to at least 1500 or 2000. Yeah, that's a lot of power into sound. <laughs> yeah. And this is also perfectly synced up with the files, right? The, mm -hmm. the files contain the audio as well as the visual. Yep. Okay, so here's what I've always wanted to know. In the days of film, you could tell when the projectionist was asleep because the film reel would run out and then all you're looking at in the movie is like white with the last little piece of the leader going through, right? And say, hey, wake up up there, right? Or something. Um, do you actually stand here and sit here during the whole time anymore? Nope. They, uh, like she had said, we eliminated projectionists with a lot of this stuff. So it all actually runs on a schedule. And so you don't even have to come in here and press the button. Uh, as long as everything runs like it's supposed to, we don't have to be up here aside from powering it up in the morning. Powering up in the morning, and if anything goes wrong, then you, someone will let you know. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> the movie stops. Uh, so I always wonder, so if the movie stops in the middle, it's clearly something's wrong, somebody really should come out from the audience and let somebody know. Yes, or we try to monitor it so that people don't have to get up, but obviously that doesn't always happen that, that way. Does that ever happen? Does anything ever go wrong? Yes. It, yeah, <laughs> it's a computer, basically, so um, it, sometimes it messes up. It's lined up with uh, a scheduler through our pre-show, so that yeah. sometimes uh, falls. Oh, and that's the other thing I wonder that's a probably important economic. I know that when I come to the movies, there are uh, a whole nice entertaining pre-show of commercials. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, and I imagine that you guys get paid to show all that stuff, we right? We do, yes. Yes, yep. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. An important yeah. economic aspect yes. of, yeah, of the theater. Yeah, it's a captive audience. Everyone's sitting there, they're looking at the screen, so, so it's a very good way of advertising. Yes, yes. And if you wanted to buy one of those little seconds, like take my course, okay, um, What? Uh, how much do you charge for um, that? We work through Fathom Events, so it's a third-party company. Okay. I do know that the closer to the movie start time, the more expensive it is. Because yes. people tend to kind of wait till the last minute, so right. they, um, making sure you get the most people viewing right. your ad, it costs a little bit more. Sort of just like the Super Bowl, right? You know, pregame doesn't cost as much, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. Right before halftime. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, this is really neat. Well, hey, let's see what it looks like out there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so how many seats are in this? There are 485 seats. 485. Yes. Do you ever sell this out? We do, yeah. Huh. It's crazy, but yeah. <laughs> um, IMAX supposedly, they say there's, I, I shouldn't say supposedly, IMAX says there's not a bad seat in the, in in the, the, theater. the theater. I think uh, the front row will probably be a little stretched, but <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but we do try to keep it far enough away so that, but up here especially, like every angle's, yeah. every angle's perfect, so. Uh, um, does anyone ever complain about it being too loud? Because I, I often felt that my eardrums are breaking. They do uh, sometimes. We tend to turn it down during the week. It definitely makes a difference when you have 400 people in here Got versus it. 25 people sure. on a Monday morning. So we do um, 
Try now, to is there a set uh, level of sound that you're like required or told you have to do? Or I'm how not much required. Control? IMAX is good about you know okay. us catering to the customers, but but okay. they don't want us to compromise their sound. They do work really hard on that. That's something IMAX is known for. Right. Um, so we do get a, a default that it's supposed to be at, but mm -hmm. we're allowed to stray from that okay. slightly. But we definitely want to make sure we're not that we have that quality that IMAX is known for. So. Oh, sure. Sure. And really nice seats too. Yes, yeah, these are, like are our new seats. So yeah, cushions. yeah, and they they're rockers, so uh, nice okay. and comfortable. Yeah. So so the screen the screen itself. Yes. What what is the screen made out of? Oh man, it's is it vinyl. Uh, I think it's a, some type of vinyl. I don't remember right. specifically. Um, it's interesting that it's gray or silver. It's yeah, not. It's, it's not white. I always is, thought movie screens being white. The three D, they're they're always silver uh -huh. um, for us anyway. Yeah. So there's actually uh, s I think it's between seven and ten coats of uh, silver paint on okay. it to so give is it. That, is that because uh, it's more reflective, or because of the polarization? Do you need to reflect at different angles? Uh, because of the polarization, it has to do with the angles that the silver will reflect versus the white, but then also it's just more reflective in general, so okay. you get a little more light off of the screen than you would with the white screen. Yeah, but because of the painting, it's super delicate. The white ones, you, if something gets thrown at the screen, we can go up and just wipe it down. The silver screens you can't touch. This is the only IMAX in South or in Eastern Illinois. Okay. Um, so we're about 78 feet wide and about 42 feet tall. So. Wow. Yep. And how does that compare to your normal? Multiplex the rest of your screens. What are their dimensions? Do you know? I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I'd say it's probably <laughs> less than a third of what the screen is, though. Sure. Easily less and than a third. And how much do those yeah. each of those theaters hold? I guess you have some different sizes. But yeah, generally our, um, we have two, one that seats 257, okay. and then 221. Those are our other two largest. So. Okay, and then um, the bunch of them that are more like 100 or? Uh, yeah, we have ranging from 181 to as low as 67. Wow. So, and then actually we just remodeled. We have a luxury theater that seats. Uh, 49? Mm -hmm. 49. And that's the one with the seats that move? The recliners. Those are the oh. recliners. So. Like but the concept seat. is to cater to the audience. And if some people want luxurious seats and then they're willing to pay more, some want yeah. ones that are going to poke them with 3D effects, yeah. then sell them that, right? It's about options now. People, home theaters have come a long way. So we really need to give them something to come out of their house for, some options and uh, things that will make it worth them coming to our theater right. to view it. So. It seems like movies are as popular as ever, though. That we, we are. We're doing well. It, it's, it's just something you can't beat, I feel, especially with IMAX. I feel like it's not just going to a movie. It's really experiencing something. So right. I really, I take pride in that. I'm really, I really love this place. Right. I love what I do. And I think the magic of movies is a real thing. So, right. yeah. Well, that's, that's really wonderful. This yeah. has uh, been a great experience for us. We appreciate it. Yeah, and, thank you for And coming. now you know how things work. IMAX.